our first citizen, the Pooh Man. If I wanted wow. the Pooh Man to actually <laughs> stay in this city, I needed to build a few service buildings. Okay. Okay, I was not ready for the Pooh Man to be <laughs> that dapper. <laughs> How's it going, people? Jack here. So, I've been recommended to check out a video by Modern Citizens on City Skylines 2. One that I guess is a little bit awkward. Well, not so much for him, but perhaps me, because I literally just recorded a video, at least my final thoughts on the topic regarding Unity, which is the engine that the city skyline i guess the second as well is running on i don't suppose that they managed to shift to a new engine as quickly as possible but there's a whole debacle going on with unity at the moment they're being dumbasses but like hopefully they just revert on all of the policies that they are trying to establish and that this doesn't harm paradox interactive yeah, still, Paradox, I'm still not very happy with what you've done with Kerbal Space Program 2. Yeah, I know it's an intercept game, but it goes through the Paradox launcher, okay? So I'm gonna give it on them. But anyways, without further ado, let's just jump into the video. The Earth. Wow. Hello, oh, Mart. Uh, hey. ah. Hello again. Welcome to Poopville. The editing is... Looks fresh, at least. A few weeks ago, the wonderful people over at Paradox Interactive gave me access to an early build of City Skylines 2. Mm -hmm. And then, they put me on a crane. We'll talk about that later. Was he in Germany? <laughs> I've seen those hanging about. So, uh uh, let's keep watching! In City Skylines 2, you build cities, construct townships, move people around with mass transit networks, and try your absolute hardest to not murder hundreds of thousands of people with a tsunami of poo. Since this is an early oh, pre-release oh. game... <laughs> Perfect spot that I just spotted there. First of all, poo tsunami. Second, mud. Look. I know that he has Kerbal Space Program, and that there's a possibility of of him having it in the Epic Game Launcher. I doubt it, but it might be. But ain't no way that this man has nothing in between City Skylines and all of this cultured material. Because I'm cultured, but this is this is way more than milk. This this straight up cheese. My God, <laughs> freaking Vanguard Princess down the bottom. <laughs> only a select few people can actually play it, which gave me a devilish idea. Without too much effort, I can probably make the largest city the game has ever seen. And so then far. I can commit unspeakable atrocities upon my glorious creation. So, let us begin. Why does it make a volcano of poop? Wanting to start things off properly, I began the game with tutorials. Move with these keys, tilt the camera with these keys, build roads like this. Mmm. Zoning. And before I knew it, I had built the beginning of a small town. Burgeoning with life, ready to take on the future, inhabited by the brightest of a new generation. What the hell are those crossroads, my dude? Freaking intersection from hell. Uh Look, my, my aunt and uncle came back from the US not too long ago, and they, they, they showed me images of, um, I think, the Hollywood area. Oh, Jesus. Now, for one, there's the homeless crisis that is going on there. This is already something that I freaking do not understand. Well, I understand it. The US has bad social systems, but the road, the intersections. It's like they're trying to murder people. And I know that from a Badger video, I was ratioed by some saying that uh, I was wrong in saying that the US was built of nothing but parking spaces. It is true. I stand by that. So much parking. But the one thing that I would admit is the fact that yes, there are no bike lanes because obviously you are using way too many cars. But you could circumvent that by actually building things that accommodate less cars. Yes, it is big, but you could still build it better and have both. A town of bustling opportunities, limitless growth. <laughs> that a penis. <laughs> Yep. 
That's uh, uh Wow. Yeah. It's a mile Unlike left the first for sure. Game, I had no limit on the amount of terraforming I could do, which meant I could do things like this. <laughs> for Cock the city's road network, I had conceived an incredible solution <laughs> to traffic. Triangles. This amazing technology makes every single intersection in the city six ways. You might think this is very stupid, and it is, but what's yeah. even stupider is this type of intersection actually exists in real life. And, where uh, and by the way, I'm blaming the US for having this. France has it as well. As somebody who's gone through several road trips, roundabouts as well in France, they're way too much, way too many, but yeah, they also have six lanes. It's stupid. Where else would it exist than beautiful, sunny Los Angeles? The real intersection is even worse than these ones though, because it doesn't have any traffic lights, just six stop signs. What the fuck? With traffic 100% yeah. solved forever, I could move on to more important things, like schools, police stations, water infrastructure, fire stations, and most importantly, somewhere to put all the poo. How about, uh, the ocean? Here. Once the poo had been successfully routed into the poo cano, it was only a matter of time until it filled. Oh god. Well, a matter of very long time. I spent about another hour on the city, and by then it had filled to about here. Why are there buildings in there? Don't let this man near a building space. Ever. Ever. Not very high. And that meant it was... <clears throat> time to drink. Placing a water pump inside the Pucano resulted in fresh poo being delivered directly to people's taps, which caused the entire city to either pack up and leave, or die. Well, <laughs> Poopville was no more. Yo, there was <laughs> snow on the... <laughs> oh my god. Oh, <clears throat> it sounds so wrong to say there was snow on the cock mountain. <clears throat> Jesus. No, I should stop with just G's. And with that, we move on to attempt two. Gentlemen, welcome to Peniston. <laughs> okay. This city went a little better than Poopville. A little. A little. <laughs> this time, I spent a bit longer learning the basic principles of the game and examined things that had been changed from City Skylines 1. Things like much larger, really nice looking service buildings, like this yep. coal plant. Ooh. Or well, this landfill. Mm. I checked out the new zoning, pedestrian-only streets, the grid tool, Dude, stop. and of course, radio announcements telling you what's going on in the city. The commercial district is booming. More radio announcements. So a housing shortage is bad for the people trying to move here, right? And my personal favorite. There's a widespread concern over fears that an insidious underground criminal organization <laughs> has seized control of the area. Recent crime stats confirm get him, get. that the crime wave has certainly gripped our region. And it's showing no signs of letting up. I don't like the sound of that, Glenda. We'll be back after this. Oh, 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 oh All of this was great. So, I, uh... Flat the most realistic part of that is that the teenager isn't hearing anything. We'll be back after this. <laughs> oh, 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 oh All of this was great. So, I, uh... Flattened a bit of land and got to work on this area. <laughs> I did a bit of bus stuff, zoned a bunch of housing, built these terrible, awful roads connecting everything, and then people started drinking poo again. I'm sorry, Australian man doing Australian things. <laughs> like adding freaking, what's the name of that uh, rocky formation again? Hales Rock? I think it's Hales Rock, right? Or Uluru before anybody cancels me. Yeah, U Uluru, the uh, word that the Aborigines uh, call it. <laughs> freaking desert monolith. Attempt 3. Before Attempt 3 began, I had a few things to do. Namely, fly all the way to Germany, hang out for a few days, yeah, it and was. then get hoisted 50 meters into the air by a crane. Now that yeah. we're in position, it was time to begin our fabulous new city. When naming this new city, I tried to think of a name that inspired greatness. A name that made me think. Mm. Gentlemen, behold, the grand city of... <laughs> this time, I wasn't going to keep messing around. This time, I would research the ins and outs of city building, and I would construct a wonderful, perfect, flawless utopian city. So first we'll things see. first, I did some research. 
Oh, the Matrix. <laughs> and with that research completed, here are my findings. Nice. So, we want to build the largest possible city. A city that has an extremely high population, all buying products, driving their car, and most importantly, pooping out their butt. <laughs> well, to get to that point, our new city of Um couldn't just be a huge grid with nothing but apartment buildings. Believe me, I tried. No one moved in. It depends on what type needed to you be make. Attractive. People had to actually want to move in. And that substantially complicates things. So, why would a citizen want to move here? Well, maybe they've got a good job, or well, the amenities are nice, the shops sell cool stuff, the city services are reliable, it's safe, there are dudes that be selling that good Zaza, plenty of crack, a nice, pleasant location to gamble away my kids' college fund, hookers oh, no. on every street corner. The reasons one might want to live in a city are truly endless, so we have to try to accommodate as many as possible. First and foremost, they need somewhere to live. So let's build some roads, zone them for low-density residential, and wait. Nice. Hooray! Our first citizen, the Poo Man. If I wanted wow. the Poo Man to actually <laughs> stay in this city, I needed to build a few service buildings. Okay, I was not ready for the Poo Man to be <laughs> that dapper. <laughs> groundwater pump for pumping groundwater. A windmill for milling wind. An industrial sector for people to work at. And then I had to decide on a place to put the poo. That volcano. Mm, oh god. Yeah, Once that was all done, I zoned a few more things and then just sort of sat back and watched my creation do its magic. I even found a dog. Meow. Bar. Bar. And there we go. Okay. Our first milestone. Better than I thought. Look, to my understanding of uh, meme editing, one of the first rules is that whenever you're showcasing an animal, make them sound as anything else but what they actually sound like. Remy, sit. Ooh. This milestone unlocked a few new service buildings. I placed down a medical clinic, a cemetery, an elementary school, a landfill. The city of Mmm was definitely making me go... Mm. <laughs> With the city now growing quite quickly, came even more unlock. Roundabouts, fire stations, police stations, higher density housing, specialized industry. And before I knew it, Mmm had wow. reached 1,000 population. It's so much and prettier than the first one. Nighttime. Nighttime in this game looks quite nice. Yeah. Now, the build I was playing on was quite an early one, which meant it came with a few bugs here and there. My favorite of which being gas stations with uh, rather powerful lights. So, what next? Well, now the city had reached a thousand population, I had to do something truly awful. I had to start thinking. You see, in the first game, all big cities had one common struggle, traffic. If I wanted the city to be truly huge, I had to get on top of traffic before it became an issue. Yeah. So of course, I did some more research. He's going to talk about the uh, uh, the flow of traffic, where you start with highways and go down to street levels, right? Like infrastructure hierarchy, that is one of the first mistakes that one makes in city skylines. I played the first one, which, by the way, uh, weird flex. I did study two and a half years of building and engineering, also with regards to constructions of habitations. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I pushed out and never finished that education. It's not as fun as it is now as it was back then because my parents were pretty mad at me back then, which is something that I never really understood because I was living under the roof and my education wasn't paid by them, but by the taxes that I myself even paid. <sighs> It was a weird time, but now I'm a physics graduate, so uh, I'm pretty freaking happy. But the thing was that during that time, I was playing a lot of City Skyline with friends, and uh, yeah, we were kind of projecting some of our thoughts and the thing that we learned onto the game. Holy shit! Roads. Roads on the surface may seem simple enough. Get them wrong, and disaster will follow. So, how do you not get them wrong? Well, by following a few basic principles of road networks. First being, roadway hierarchy. Yep. You probably already have a vague idea of what this means. <laughs> Obviously, a highway has a pretty different purpose than the road that goes to your house. Mm. The hierarchy goes like this. Highways, then arterial roads, then collectors, and then, then local roads. Local. They don't necessarily need different numbers of lanes or higher speed or really anything distinguishing them. The distinction is more about where they are where in the network located. than what they actually look like. 
each step yeah. down the hierarchy trades off mobility, or how fast you can get from point A to B with access, or how many things you can put on that road. Local roads have the highest access, but lowest mobility, mobility. while highways have the highest mobility with the lowest access. Speaking of highways, uh, hey, nice. There's a highway right there. Like that's the thing that we've been like expert at in Scandinavia and also part of the of Southern Europe, Spain especially, has like uh, a, a, oh wow, quite the history when I think about it of great urban architecture. I mean, mention some here in a bit, but uh, let's keep going. So, back to the city of. We can see that these basic road principles have already been. Hold on. Dude, you can't just showcase one of the OG YouTubers just like that. <laughs> what the f***, dude? Oh my god, uh, oh, 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 what's his name? Oh my god, what's his name? It's a fe fellow scientist, but he- Oh man, not pyrocynical. <laughs> no, it's like either him or Electro Boom. But Electro Boom, I don't think so. He does not work that much with lasers. Okay, fuck it. I'm sorry. I, I need to look this up. Hey, everybody. Spyro Pyro. Today I want to give some love to everybody. This is the guy. I, look, look at him. He's fucking handsome. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that it's, 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 it is in this video where he makes s'mores with it. Right? Like, dude, he has, he's just living the freaking dream, man. Like, he was doing this like 10 years ago. And yes, once in a while, even though I don't watch his content that much, I, 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 keep, I keep myself like in congruence with what he's doing. God damn, mod, great. That's just what I needed. This road here is an arterial road. We've got some collectory looking dudes off to the side here and all our houses are placed nicely along local roads. Next up, another neighborhood. An arterial road up here and wonderful. As our city grew larger, we unlocked even more stuff. This stuff is quite important, since we need to keep our citizens happy, so more move in. <laughs> in order to keep our citizens happy, I had devised a devious plan. Fuck that. <laughs> oh! With the city sufficiently, uh, lathered in parks, I could add more stuff. An industrial area here, some mixed use developments over here, a college here, an experimental pedestrian only street with shops over here, and before I knew it, 5,000 population. At this point in the game, issues start cropping up. Like our cash flow is still negative. Or there's a little bit of traffic. Or there's a giant forest fire bearing oh. down the city. Yeah, after all that's fine. We're gonna take the noble path and completely ignore it. You see, in city skylines, road design and layout will only get you so far in fighting traffic. The best way to stop jams is for there to be no cars there in the first place. <laughs> Gentlemen, it was time to busy ourselves with public transit. Hey. Yeah. At our small scale, we only really have the capacity to add buses. So we'll add some buses. I remember first playing City Skylines 1 and spamming the shit out of buses absolutely everywhere. Doing this resulted in bus lines that look something like this. Now yes, this line does in fact service a lot of people, but if you live here yeah. and want to go here, instead of the bus going straight there, it goes here, then around here, and then stops here, and finally arrives here. It's really dumb. This system is dumb. It's far better to have a bus that just goes from one point to another in the city, and then stops in between. With that said, here's my first bus route. It takes people from the apartments to the industrial area, and back. Mm -hmm. Simple. Now of course, the whole point of doing this is to allow people to get around without using their car. The vast majority of people, when given the choice between a bus and a car, all else equal, will almost always choose a car. This is great if you want your city to look like this. Ooh. Yeah. How China achieved complete transparency by showing you the air that they breathe. But I don't. So we need to make the bus a viable alternative. We can do this with bus lanes to prioritize bus traffic or by not providing parking near the destination so they can't drive there. What's more important, however, is that the public transit system has layers to it. Public transit isn't just buses. It's also trams, metro, ferries, trains, and even aircraft. All these systems should mesh together to provide a viable alternative to just getting in your car and driving to your destination. The end result? Well, hopefully, not this. I mean, one good way of mitigating that is by, for example, copying the Spanish model. Now, in Spain, uh, I, I visited Barcelona some... Uh, yeah, about six years ago, that was about the time. 
well, I visited a lot more than that, but the first time was six years ago during my education with that very thing that I flunked. Uh, yeah, the, the pictures of me there with red hair and stuff like uh, I, I was looking strange, just say the least. But one thing that I really like about the system is that they have these three by three blocks or like a, a square super block of nine uh, blocks of apartment buildings. I hope it makes sense. I will find some visuals of that so that it, it, can, it kind of follows what I'm saying. But within those, you have like a limited uh, speed of like 10 kilometers per hour, which means that for the most cars are not allowed to be there. Or sometimes if they are, they're supposed to be driving very slow, which of course helps the citizens to worry less about that. They focus more on either just pedestrians, which of course increases the this pedestrian space and of course also bike lanes and stuff like that. So within those areas alone, there's a good mood for the citizens. And outside of those, then you have more car traffic and stuff like that. The great thing that this has provided has been that for one, it has reduced uh, noise levels, right? Decibel levels are also very important when you are building houses. As an example, you cannot see it right now, but I am living just like 10 meters away from a train station. Yeah, I'm, guess I'm receiving all of this natural lighting here, but uh, it's a beautiful view, but it's pretty noisy if it wants to be, especially when I have the windows open, but we have like sound absorbent walls and stuff like that. So it, it, can, it really helps. But beside that, you will of course also have a reduction in nitrogen oxide, which is the uh, pollutant that is uh, made by uh, your vehicles, cars and motorcycles or whatever. So, and just other pollutants overall. So it's a good way of doing that as well. And also if you want to have some sort of public transport, trams are available. And as he mentioned, also metros and buses. And just a little extra thing before we keep going. The craziest thing about this is that in Spain, this was actually already designed back in the 1800s. Like there was a guy called Idelfons. Oh man, it's it's easier to remember if I say it in fr in French. Idelfons Kerda. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's, it sounds funny if you understand the meaning of that in, in, in French. But yeah, it, it, this man was an urban planner who had already made all these designs in mind and also accommodated uh, cars for the future and train stations as well and metro even. Like he was beyond his time, just in the same fashion that if you've been to South Korea, they had already planned for how the internet infrastructure would have been as soon as they got the money to do that. So yeah, I, I love it when you have like actual visionaries that are thinking, uh, that are thinking for the future, not some billionaire that is trying to make a boring tunnel with cars underneath, like, the fuck. With the beginnings of a public transit network laid out, came rezoning. If I wanted the city to be the largest the game had ever seen, these single-family homes were no good. Oh no. In their place, I zoned for mixed use, which are just apartment blocks with shops on the bottom. Instead of housing four or five people, mixed use developments can house 60 to 80. Of course, I couldn't rezone everything at once, so I just did it gradually. Bulldozing grandma's house, only every so often. <laughs> With more population, once again, saw it came more unlocks. This time, we'd unlocked the office space. Why work in a dangerous, hazardous manufacturing job when you can just sit on a computer and slap a keyboard for eight hours a day? <laughs> Wait a minute. Offices have a few advantages over industry. The important one being, they don't produce pollution. This means that we can place them wherever we want. They also employ a higher proportion of educated workers. This is good when your city has a high level of education. Mine doesn't, but it's nice to think that maybe someday, someday. it will. <laughs> In the meantime, though, the citizens needed to be put back to work. Ah, oh, shit. In particular, we needed more industry. Perhaps like this chemical plant building. My dude, you've played Minecraft. <laughs> and suddenly you're ch you, you assume that every children is yearning for the mines. Thing, which looks really cool. And what a drink, whatever funny liquid it produces. Mmm. Mmm. Smart, no, do not drink the jungle juice. <laughs> wow.
Listen, if I did not know that this was sponsored by Paradox Interactive, this would have been a good, um, what's it called, Gamer Sops uh, promotion. Oh, fuck. In that time I spent doing uh, whatever it was that I was doing, the city had managed to pass the 15,000 population milestone. Nice. Nice. Oh, yeah, and I was uh, still on the crane. Guys, it's been a long time. Guys, can you please let me down, please? Guys. Everything in M was going perfectly. The commercial district was The commercial bo district is booming. Oh, what happens when you need a pee break? <laughs> oh no. As the Industry was on Industry the rise. Industry in the region is on the rise. Mm. And when <laughs> a housing shortage was driving up prices a in the area. A housing shortage is driving up prices in the area. Oh my god, yes. That's I get it. Do these radio announcers ever shut the fuck up? No, Martin. We don't shut up. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no, oh no. What? Martin, time is running out. The citizens demanded Martin. The citizens want poo. Martin, what? the Pucano is calling. I don't know, why are you Martin, saying this? The oh, this isn't right. Stop, is please. Calling. Stop. Martin, Stop, please. Will, please stop. Please stop. Please stop. What are you talking about? I like this. Oh, please. What are you talking about? No, I don't want to fight with poo. No. No. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. Uh, well, uh, I hit this new milestone. Yippee! Built this bridge thing. Yeah. Martin. Mm. Okay, well, uh, maybe we should try a port. You know, because it's got, like, the funny. You know, the funny. You know, the, the funny. The fu his brain stopped working. He's got poop in his head. <laughs> funny water vehicle, you know, you know, the funny. Uh. So I made a port. Now the city has shipping access. Hooray! Okay, how about a train yard and some trains? Alrighty, bam! Trains! A stop over here, a stop over here, some tunnels connecting them all, this cool train bridge thing. Nice! How about a metro? Metro stations, tunnels, metro lines. The attractiveness of mm was truly <laughs> off the charts. And in the next couple of hours of playing, the population ballooned from 15,000 to 50,000 people. This, once again, unlocked a swath of new high-density buildings. So to cram even more people into my more and more limited space, I zoned a bunch of high-rises. Mm was well on its way to city glory. Mm. But this huge <laughs> influx did in fact cause a few issues. Namely, traffic. With so many people moving in all at once, car traffic coming into the city was truly huge. So to combat this, I came up with a genius idea. A wonderful, pleasant, beautiful urban highway. Currently, there's right. only one access point into the city. But with our wonderful new urban highway and this cool bridge, there was now two. Okay, highways are cool and all that, but what's the best way to merge a highway with another road? Gentlemen, it's time Inter to dive into the wonderful world of <laughs> interchanges. So, you're an urban planner, and you've got a problem. You've got this big road going this way, and another big road going this way. How do you join them together? Well, with an interchange. There are several to choose from, and they all serve slightly different purposes. Trumpet interchange, three-way directional interchange, single point urban interchange, cloverleaf, partial cloverleaf, <laughs> diverging diamond, and everyone's favorite concrete abomination, the stack interchange. Oh! Some of these interchanges are meant for moving traffic from one highway to another, like the stack interchange, while others are made for taking traffic off the highway and putting it onto a more accessible road. This is Jesus. what we want for our new highway. So for this job- I've never come across a stack interchange, and I hope that I never will. I chose the diamond interchange. Well, a pretty basic and honestly shit version of one, but a diamond interchange hey, nonetheless. Still one from this GTA. basic <laughs> shit design down the length of our wonderful stretch of road and ended up with this. Once that was done, it was time to build a cool bridge all the way back to the mainland and connect it up to the highway down there. This requires another interchange. <laughs> Hooray! For this job, we're using a three-way directional interchange. As the title says, it's three ways, directional, and an Interchange. Change. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, with that place <laughs> down, this wonderful new section of highway is open for business. And you know what that means? More expansion. More expansion, of course, meaning huge influxes of new people. In just a few hours, the city managed to go from 50,000 population all the way up to 90,000. 
huge swaths of new people making their way into the city via our new highway proved very quickly that the interchanges I had designed were in fact very bad, and I should feel bad about it. <laughs> fucking idiot, fucking stupid dumbass. Not to worry though, because one of my intercity trains I had the foresight of building was doing some serious heavy lifting. A couple of them were even full, holding 800 passengers each. Oh my god, that's freaking Shinkansen type of level. Oh. Yeah, if you've ever taken a train in Japan at the busy hours, you are a blessed individual, and especially if you survived it. All 800 of which got off at one station, causing this wonderful cascade of bodies to come flooding out, filling the streets like some sort of gelatinous liquid. Beautiful. And with that, more expansion. I built more neighborhoods, and more neighborhoods, and more and more thousands of people flocked to me. Tram lines, God highways, damn, thousands the editing of spaces, is so and good. buildings. It was only a matter of time before the population skyrocketed yet again. But Yeah, except it, uh, didn't. For whatever reason, people had decided enough was enough, and they didn't want to move in anymore. What's worse is, for the life of me, I couldn't figure out why. Mousing over the citizen happiness meter revealed that citizens in my city were having... High noise pollution, yeah sure, but small homes. Unreliable mail services. <laughs> but hold on, so he's building all of these things. How about the, uh, the jobs? A wonderful time. Lots of wealth, reliable city services, and no poo in the drinking water. Yeah, that's good. Yet. This city was just good. So why then was no one moving in? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. During this whole time of expanding the city, I had assumed that offices are just plain better than industrial areas. You see, you need a offices can be placed anywhere, so I'd just been placing them wherever I pleased. Typically, right next to residential, so people wouldn't have to travel far for work. Mm. Unfortunately, there's a limit. At some point, people get sick of their keyboard slapping and need manufacturing jobs. So I gave them what they wanted, and holy shit! A nice influx of tens of thousands of people. I passed over a hundred thousand, then over a hundred and fifty. People were literally dying to get to my city. And, predictably, the traffic was really bad. I expanded so much that I'd filled up the barrier island. I expanded wow. down to the mainland, filling it with a huge, expansive suburbia. I built over a hundred elementary schools. The population grew still. I built these cool university buildings, the Large Hadron Collider, this needle-looking <laughs> thing, and the population grew still. International- <laughs> Freaking LHC. <laughs> Airport, more suburbia, nuclear energy, more industry, trams, trains, more suburbia, highways, skyscrapers, incineration plants, more suburbia, infrastructure of all shapes and sizes. The city grew and grew and grew. Uh oh. And here we are, fellas. 300,000 citizens. I'm pretty confident this is the largest city ever built in City Skylines 2. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a question. What are 300,000 people good at? Maybe making a lot of money, or using lots of incineration plants, or perhaps producing lots of digital goods. Yes. Being killed. <laughs> they are good at all of those things, but they're most good at one thing in particular. They are good at pooping. Gentlemen, I present to you the purpose of this city. Oh no. What everything has been leading up to. I present the Pukano. <laughs> oh done. What is this? The latest Jordan Peele movie? Yo, it actually wouldn't surprise me. After watching Nope, which was good, uh yeah, I, I could definitely see him making a horror based on poop alone. <laughs> <coughs> oh my god. <laughs> you know what makes this extra good? It's the fact that all that I'm imagining, besides his visuals of course, are those kids who are singing the Halo theme in a bathroom. <laughs> Hand on their chest. Oh. <laughs> 
Okay. This was nice. Oh. In the ensuing Poon army, the entirety of Mm was destroyed. Mm -hmm. Only one single person remained. The, the Poon man. man. If you'd like to beat my record and claim even more lives, pre-order this fantastic game with my link. Goodbye. Oh, he streamed that for... Wow, jeez. Holy shit. Uh, th this was great. This was amazing. Like, what he did in Minecraft was pretty damn good, especially with that uh, replay mod that he had installed. But, wow, uh, this was like watching the factorial videos, but the, e the editing is so much better. The cinematography, the writing. Damn. Anyways, uh, thanks, Mark. Now I kind of want to play City Skylines. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for checking out this video. As always, please, if you aren't yet subscribed to Martin Sturpins, please go and do that. And with that said, though, if you liked this video, give it a like, and I see you guys in the next one. Bye.